Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to go over a piece of news that Christoph brought up in the Matrix chat that I really thought would have gotten more attention by now that is not. And that is that Google appears to be quietly deprecating support for the dialer and messaging apps in the Android open source project. This is from AndroidAuthority.com. Now, Android is an open source operating system, which is pretty cool. Unlike iOS, you can review the source code for Android. You can fork it and create your own. That's why you have things like Lineage OS, Graphene OS, Calyx OS, Cyanogen Mod back in the day, EOS. You have all these different forks. It's also cool because back in the day, you'd have companies like Samsung that would install garbage bloat like TouchWiz on your phone that nobody really wanted there. And one of the ways that you can get rid of that is by deleting the operating system on the phone, taking a fork of the Android open source project, which was open source, and installing it on your phone. It's great for user choice, it's great for being able to strip away this garbage, and it's great for also being able to get rid of a lot of the spying crap on your phone. However, this is something that's becoming more and more difficult as time moves on. As I've mentioned in some of my past videos, there are a lot of privacy violations going on when you're dealing with the stock Android operating system as you get it on most phones. There's something called Google Play Services and also the Google Services Framework that is installed. This is proprietary and this is in addition to the open source Android open source project. So you have the open source operating system, but if you want your banking apps to work, if you want your rideshare apps to work, if you want a lot of the applications that people buy a, a smartphone for to work, you're going to need Google's proprietary stuff. And Google's proprietary stuff does stuff like this. It, well, not only is it uploading your location to Google, it's also uploading whether you're walking, driving, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different information that gets shared. This excellent paper also goes over how this information on your phone can become de-anonymized as a result of the information that gets sent back via the Google Play services and Google services frameworks when it's on your phone. It gives you snapshots of info sent back to Google when an application is launched. You can go on to continue to see the information that gets sent back to Google with all the identifying information of your device, how this relates to advertising. There are people that want the functionality that you get with a modern smartphone without all of this stuff. And there's a lot of more data collection by Google, whether or not you consent to it uh, when you're using an Android phone versus an iPhone, which is annoying. And there's also other studies here. This is a 55-page study, and there's another 12-page one over here that I'll link to for anybody who wants more information on why I personally choose to use a device that does not have Google Play services or Google services framework running on it. The fact that Google takes this open source operating system and then requires that you install their proprietary spyware in order to do what 99% of the population expects a smartphone to be able to do is one of the things that's going to make it a little bit more difficult to make use of the Android open source project if you actually want to to create a fork that people are actually going to install on their phone. And this is going to make it just a little bit more difficult because what this means is that when you're creating that fork, now you have to create a dialer and a messaging app as well for the people who are going to use the dialer and the messenger because it's not going to be integrated into the Android open source project in that same way. What you're getting here is an obsolete old version that may or may not continue to work and be secure. Now, when it comes to Google's proprietary blobs, you already have people like Marvin at MicroG who I've interviewed and Daniel McKay with Graphene OS who've come up with Sandbox Google Play. These are both different ways of trying to avoid having Google spy on everything you're doing when you're using your phone while simultaneously retaining the features and functionality that come with having these pieces of software installed on your phone. This is a difficult thing to do. The number of people that know how to do what Marvin is doing with MicroG or Daniel McKay is doing with Sandbox Google services, you could probably count on one hand, if even. There's very few people who know how to do this. There's very few people who have that specialized knowledge in this particular piece of software to be able to create something like that. So it's already incredibly difficult to create something that is based on the Android open source project that normal users are willing to use because, again, a normal user is going to expect that they can use Uber on their phone. They're going to expect that a banking application works. And it's going to become even more difficult to create these ROMs and these forks if certain features like this are slowly taken away. So now they're going to have to create a dialer app and they're going to have to create a messaging app and they're going to have to maintain these on top of maintaining everything else that they're maintaining when they're releasing a new build. Above all, what makes this difficult is funding. How many people here use an open source fork of Android on their phone? How many people up until recently or have admittedly have never actually paid any money to the developers of it? I'll admit, I gave some money, but I gave some money after a good eight years of using these forks, which really sucks. Most people that use these enjoy them, they love them, they share them with their friends, and they do not give 10 cents to the person that made it all possible. 
there's not a lot of money in the industry of maintaining and developing these forks of Android so that they can have these features. And I wonder if this is going to be kind of like a death by a thousand cuts kind of thing that Google's looking to do where, okay, well, we have the Android open source project, so we can say that we're not evil, so it's open. But if you want 99% of what makes a modern smartphone a smartphone to work, you're going to have to have our proprietary blobs that spy on you in there. Oh, and by the way, we're going to take away the messaging app. Okay, nobody uses that anyway anymore. Oh, and now we're going to take away the dialer app and so on and so forth. This is one of those things where it really kind of makes me wonder if the goal there is death by a thousand cuts. Again, with the repair industry, you used to be able to get diagnostic software. It used to be able to find it, even if it wasn't on the most legitimate of websites. Now you have to connect to Apple servers to get it. You used to be able to buy excess stock from LG, AU Optronics, and Shime, and now you can't. So I can't buy screens anymore to do my job. I used to be able to take a sleep sensor out of another computer and be able to put it into the computer that I'm fixing. If that customer had corrosion on their sleep sensor, now I can't do that without using Apple's proprietary software that connects to their servers every single time my industry is dying. And it's not dying because of a single gut punch. It's dying a death of a thousand cuts. Each one of those cuts makes me less competitive. Each one of those cuts requires that I now explain to a customer that a repair that I used to be able to do is a repair that I can, I can no longer do. Each one of those cuts ensures that there is a customer that has a more negative experience with me now than the experience that they would have had five years ago, 10 years ago, or even six months ago. And each one of those cuts is something that is going to affect me negatively financially. Each one of these cuts affects us in a negative way. But more importantly, people who are not focusing on each individual cut are just going to look at the result of it at the end of the line. My services are more expensive. My services are less effective. I am bad at what I do. Therefore, I am either an out-of-touch technician or a greedy asshole business owner. That'll be what it comes to in five or 10 years once this has been completely eliminated as an industry, rather than people looking at the individual cuts. And what I hope that people get out of this channel is the ability to look at each one of these cuts as they occur so that when the final end result of the cuts does occur, people can see it for what it is, which is the results of the thousands of cuts, rather than just, oh, they just don't want to maintain this open source project anymore. Or, you know, these developers just got lazy and they decided to stop maintaining this fork. When in reality, it's damn, if we want to be able to do this, we have to figure out a way to reverse engineer Google's Play services in order to make it actually work without spying on you all the time. Or damn, okay, now in addition to having to do that work, we also have to create a dialer and a messenger. And there's probably more that's going to be, have to be created as time goes on, as Google undoes the mistake of open sourcing the Android open source project and continues to hack away at it. And when I say mistake, to be clear, I am not a man that opposes open source software. I think open source software is great. However, I think that as the pendulum has kind of swung from the whole don't be evil thing to the Google that we have now, I'm sure that there are people within the company that see the decision to keep the Android open source project open as a mistake. There are people that I've spoken to that say, you know, they say that Google is completely evil and they're horrible and I hate them, but they have to understand that keeping the Android open source project as an open source project, that is a choice. That is a position that people within the company are likely advocating for based on strong moral and ethical principles. They want to see that base remain open source, even if there's these all these little cuts that are happening along the way. However, there are probably also people within the company that really don't like that position, that want to see it go away, and they don't have the political power or will to be able to just de-open source the entire project just like that. But it doesn't have to be just like that. It can just be a bunch of little cuts along the way until you're stuck with this obsolete shell of what used to be a mobile operating system that was actually functional and works. As I quote from OS News when they talk about how this has been hacked away at for a very long period of time. Soon, if you build the open source Android project, you will no longer be able to send messages or make phone calls without adding your own messaging and dialer applications. And the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter much. It's every OEM uses their own applications, but for the open source operating system that is Android, this is another nail in the coffin. Due to the slow erosion of functionality from the Android open source project, as well as the transfer of functionality from the Android open source project to closed source Google applications and frameworks, we're fast approaching a point where you can't really say that the Android open source project is a full open source mobile operating system anymore. And I quote, is a mobile operating system that cannot send messages or make phone calls really complete? And I would argue no. Now, again, do you have the right to another company's code? I'm not suggesting that you do. I'm just suggesting that you take a look at each individual cut and try to see where it's leading. You have two providers now. You have iOS, which is completely closed. You can only use their hardware. 
You must use their services and systems. You can only install the apps that they tell you you can install. You have to use their charge port and provider and everything else. And you have Android, where you can install your own applications, but as long as they can kind of see everything that you're doing as you're doing it. And again, this is not the world that many of the people that subscribe to this channel in particular are excited to live in. And if there's one thing you get out of this video, health is one thing you get out of this channel, what I hope that you get out of it is being able to see each of these cuts as they occur, to be able to project into the future what the goal of those cuts are and how that is going to affect not just you, but society. But above all, when the result of all those cuts are finally seen in society to blame those responsible and accountable for each of those individual cuts rather than blaming the people who were affected by it at the end of the line. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.